What's going on, FIFA fans? I'm Golden Boy coming at to you live from the Volta pitch here at EA Play. Now, I had a blast actually hosting a FIFA Ultimate Team Champions Cup a few weeks back, but that was FIFA 19. And today we're here to talk about FIFA 20. Now, if you caught the brand new trailer that dropped this morning, you already know that Volta football They're is owning. a new way to play. Return oh, football look at this guy who moves. The FIFA to the streets. You like that? All right, now, for those of you who missed it, let's take a look. Hit me a pass. Ha. Nice. In a bit, I'm going to be chatting with Sam Rivera, the lead producer at FIFA 20, about some of the new gameplay features that are going to be coming to FIFA 20. But first, we go across the pond. Last week, singer Damn. and Fulham football Odin. Grimes caught up with some special guests to give us the details on Volta football and the culture that inspired it. Check it out. <laughs> Owning. Volta producer Jeff Antwi and Manchester United and England legend Rio Ferdinand to talk about a subject close to my heart, street football. Street football. Okay, so Rio, we're here in London, your hometown. Cage football, street football. What was your like memories and experiences growing up? Did you play a lot of it? Now, this was where I grew up. This is exactly what I've done day in, day out. In there, the ball never goes out of play. Physically, it's demanding. You're forced to almost have a personality and show a personality in there. Do you know what I mean? The There's demands... definitely no hiding in there. Oh, is no, there? you can't hide in there. So I used to play in the street with all the boys, and it was kind of the same. You know, we'd learn how to bounce it off the curb and, and uh, use the walls on people's houses <laughs> as another player. What was it for you that made you want to bring it even into the game for us it's a return to uh, street football for the fifa franchise and we're really excited about being able to you know be in places like this you know where it's rooted in the real people the real places authenticity creativity culture are all things that we wanted to bring to to volta look at that guy's footwork, yeah, the footwork it's amazing that's what you can do in volta though so that's can part you? of that's part of the detail in the gameplay so you uh, can do like all these mad tricks like this well just being able to be really skilled <laughs> with cool. the ball at your feet you know, whether it's a classic futsal drag or being able to play it off the wall to yourself to beat your opponent or flick it up over your head to create space for an mm. on goal. Can you use that all the players from, like, the professional teams? Absolutely. So, obviously, with it being FIFA, we want to make sure that authenticity is at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And so you can play with or against the real players, all the licensed players that we have, all the licensed clubs. And you can imagine playing uh, Chelsea versus Spurs in this London cage. Man yeah, United versus Liverpool. Man, yeah, Man United <laughs> versus Liverpool. I'd be down to play that. Not the base FIFA game, but this this could be cool. So obviously with Volta, it's it's the world's game, and there's so many locations that you can play with, from a rooftop in Tokyo to a, a London cage like this, or even an underpass in Amsterdam. So you know we want to make sure that what we're building is you know real to the space, real to the people. Well, where's the like craziest place you play football? I was actually in a in a camp in LA, and I played a bit of a bit of soccer there, which I soccer I've never played it there before. Um, the pitches are a lot nicer than when I grew up playing in Liverpool. <laughs> what about you, Rio? Maybe a fa in a, a favela in Brazil. Oh. I went to the World Cup in Brazil. Uh, my first one, I didn't as a pundit. I managed to go. She used the, the proper term. 
<laughs> and amongst that was just like a pitch in the middle of it in a cage. A bit like here, but it's just different setting. Right. What type of football were you playing? We played whoever was there. Right. So you just play with the numbers you've got. Yeah. If there was 3v3, fine. If it was five sides, not a problem. Yeah. So What's great is that's Volta. Being able to play 3v3, 4v4, 5v5, playing with goalkeepers, playing without goalkeepers, mm. you know, playing in a cage like this or playing futsal, you know, with more authentic rules. I think Volta does a really good job of, of representing the diversity of the game, not only the people, but also in the, in the game style. You can treat the wall like your teammate, uh, passing to yourself, uh, or you can be really skillful with the ball like, you know, like these guys are, are being. Volta football is such a diverse game, and for millions of people around the world, streets is their stadium. So for you guys, like, what are some of the fundamental things that you take away from the streets? And what translates to the stadiums? Yeah, cool. Small-sided games, three, three versus three, five sides. I grew up in this environment. I think it enables you definitely to be able to deal with people 1v1, because in a game in a stadium, in front of thousands of thousands of people, you're going to have to deal with someone 1v1 like this, and with bigger spaces. So you getting used to that in this type of environment is, I think, for a young player, is, is key. Having a personality, not being afraid to try something new here. Yeah. And obviously, you know, eventually you can go and put it onto the big stage. So I think this is like, yeah, you go and go and express yourself. Mm, I think definitely the, the word, that key word, express. If you can express yourself, you see the best in everyone. I think individually, as a team. You know, street football is, for a lot of people, it's foundational. Um, and it translates to, you know, the stadiums. And for Volta, that's that's kind of how we've built um, the gameplay experience. And so we're really excited about what can we, we just call this game represent Volta, represent please? Thank you. Represent the, the flair and the, and the and the style um, that you guys just talked about. I think a lot of people as well used to always associate like skills and flair without the end product. I think that's what's great about this game is that end product's always king. Actually, you know what? Let's just name soccer. Really, really, Volta. Really want to know cool. Is, can you create female players? Nah. Absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest innovations. You can play male or female, and they play with each other as well. And that's an important uh, part of what we're building. When you go and play in there, not everyone turns up in a pair of shorts, boots. Can we have like jeans, like uh, cut downs that I've got? Or you can have, you know, t-shirts and shorts, or you can have jeans and long sleeves. Again, a big thing for us is, you know, being able to establish the culture that is street football through clothing, through how you look. Through personal style you can have short hair long hair you can have tattoos no tattoos you can play with trainers okay. a lot of the time as well is like it's not only you want to look good you want to feel good yeah. play good yeah. in some of its superstition like it's all of that all in one if you can get that into a game and transfer that and translate that into into the cage yeah. you got it made that's a big <laughs> uh, part of both of football uh, oh. just being able to represent the people um, as they are you know we want it to be authentic we want it to be diverse um, you know we want it to be cultural and creative and a lot of that is you know how you equip yourself and how you carry yourself and how you represent yourself in the game Jeff thank you so much Rio it's been a pleasure I can't wait to play Volta so I'll see it in the cage Volta well, there you have it. Volta football, pretty cool stuff there. Now, I can't wait to get my hands on it later this summer, but to talk to us about the exciting new gameplay updates and innovations that are going to be coming to FIFA 20, we have FIFA lead gameplay producer Sam Rivera here standing by. Sam, welcome. Thanks, Alex. It's great to Let's be give here. Let's give it up. Give it up for Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Pleasure to have you here, my friend. Now, here's the deal. I knew this coming into this. When they asked me to do this gig, I was like, listen, this is going to be a Tricky one, right? Because FIFA has a very passionate community. I know this. I experienced this firsthand when I hosted that FUT Champions Cup. And you and I, we talked a lot about how important it's been for you to engage with the audience, with the fans, Definitely. with the community on FIFA 20's development. So why don't we dive into that? Tell me about that process and how the community played a role in making this game a reality for you all. Absolutely. Community feedback is a big deal for us. The combination of community feedback and football itself is what inspires us every year to keep innovating and to create the most authentic and fun experience we can. And we know we have a big community. So this year, we actually talked to over 3,000 players, from pro players to new players, casual players, hardcore players. And because we know this is a two-way conversation, we yeah. released an important Pitch Notes article at the end of May, where we explain a little bit more about how we approach community feedback. 
So we listen to things like shooting inconsistencies or AI defending. And this feedback, together with our drive to create a more authentic football experience, led us to develop a new feature. Why are you calling it football, man? Together as what are you doing? Intelligence. Okay. All right. So catchphrases are all well and good, yeah. right? But let's dive into soccer this, right? because sure. I, I want to be able to dive deeper into what all this means for the player. What does football intelligence mean for the folks that are going to be playing in, this, in a few months? Sure. Football intelligence is a combination of features that improve the three main components of the match mm -hmm. on the ball off the ball and the ball itself. And this year we're innovating in those three areas. On the ball, we're enhancing the one-on-one -on -one moments by giving you new attacking and defending tools. Off the ball, with a re-architected game flow, we're giving players more time and space on the ball. And for the ball itself, we have a brand new ball physics system that elevates the authenticity on every touch. Okay, so you mentioned off the ball first. That's something that, you know, I'm assuming you're talking about computer control players there. And this is a big topic within the community. I know. How those players interact with you when you're playing the game. So, yeah, I mean, what, what, what is off the ball? What does that mean for, for us? Yes, so off the ball, if there's something that is really going to change how the game plays, okay. is the re-architected game flow. This new game flow was designed to give more time and space to the dribbler and create more one-on-ones. A one-on-one -on -one is one of the most interesting yeah. parts of football to watch or to play if you actually play the sport. And in FIFA, it's going to be the time where user skill is going to make a difference. And while we're creating more one-on-ones, we're also encouraging more user control defending. And we are uh, reducing the amount of AI defensive support that you get from your teammates. Okay. I don't understand so what's wanted, happening. I don't really know FIFA wanted, like, very well. influence the player to be engaged in that exactly. process. Uh, and I know it seems like we're kind of just like throwing questions out here. But, you know, I because I'm curious. I'm really interested, right? When I have a controller in my hand, you know, what, what does this feel like? Uh, you, you know, is there, what extra space is being created with this uh, more player-controlled approach? Yes, first of all, the re-architected game flow allows us to encourage smart technical build-up based on skill. So when you score a goal, you feel like you really worked for it. And because you mentioned space, yes, spacing is actually one of the biggest benefits of this system. You will see how your teammates spread around the pitch in a more authentic way allowing you to read the game better and also giving you new ways for you to create your own scoring chances. And visually, just the game looks much more like, like real football. Yeah. You're so the world's my biggest FIFA fan, my guy. Stop lying. For me, because exactly. Lord knows I need that. All right, which <laughs> I think, you know, a lot of us feel the struggle there. Uh, but now, what about the player, me, right? As I'm, in, as I'm playing this game, what new tools do I have that I can put out there on the pitch. Yes, so football is all about the decisive moments on the wall. And now that we're encouraging those moments, we're also giving players the tools to make sure those moments are in their control. Okay. So there's four features that I want to talk about. Composed finishing, strafe dribbling, control tackling, and the new penalty kicks and free kicks. All right, so four big topics. Yeah. Let's just dive into this. Composed finishing, what do you mean by that? Sure. We received feedback from the community regarding the difficulty to finish in front of goal. Okay. So in FIFA 20, with the new composed finishing, you're going to experience more clinical and consistent shooting when you're in a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, for example. And if you try a more difficult shot, Damn. let's say a volley from outside of the box, then you're going to have more chances to, to miss. So overall, we are improving the fundamentals of shooting to provide okay. a more authentic experience. And we also listen to feedback about time finishing and that uh, we are very confident that the changes that I just mentioned to the fundamentals of shooting, in addition to some tweaks that we're doing to the actual time finishing mechanic, are going to give <laughs> you, you a more toxic. Uh, satisfying shooting experience whether you're doing your shot. <laughs> Thank you for not. the donation. We are actually just releasing another Pitch Notes article about this topic. If you want to know more information, you can check it online. Okay, so a whole topic just on this just on alone, it. which is very <laughs> dedicated there. Now, you also mentioned another... Uh, can we get some NHL, please? Dribbling? Can we get some Chell? So, how is Chella. this now going to play a, a, a role in how I play out yeah, there? Good question. So, we are reinventing the strafe dribbling mechanic. Okay. Uh, this, this tool adds more dimension in attack, giving you more control, more precise and agile control of the ball when dribbling. And I would say this tool is great to lure your opponent in, and then when he's getting closer, use your player's agility, speed, and skill to beat that defender. So if it wasn't any indication, though, you know, I, I'm going to be on defense quite a bit. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. because of that, as a defender now, yeah. you, we're continuing to just run through these tools, these new gameplay additions that are coming to it. 
What about on the defensive front? Yes, to counter the attacking tools, we also need to bring some innovation into my favorite defending. thing. My favorite thing to the do in FIFA is to slide system, into my enemy. Uses the sophistication <laughs> from the Whoever I'm facing, my goal year, is to slide to every single person. If they have the ball, okay. slide tackle, win slide tackle, back. slide, slide, never, slide. When that's that's all I do. Context. Okay, and then the most intense, nerve-wracking moment oh, yeah, in any game of FIFA. Me and my boy Rob, we went. <laughs> This is an everyday thing for us. Penalty kicks. Yes. <laughs> what changes are you making to penalty kicks? We have brand new penalty kicks and free kick systems. Okay. So first of all, the aiming mechanics are completely different and more accessible. But obviously, we're keeping some elements of skill in there to make sure there's enough depth in the mechanics for those that want to be masters on those. How are you ever going to stop that? And for keep. example, in free kicks, you're going to have <laughs> full fuck? control of the spin that you apply to the ball. And that's going to create your trajectory. So you can do uh, side spin, top spin, no spin, or a combination of them. And that's going to be based on how you swing your right stick. And then you will see the trajectory. So you can go around the wall. You can go over the wall. You can do a knuckle shot, for example. Ultimately, these systems are, are more, uh, th they're more fun. You have more control so that you feel okay. like it's more mm -hmm. rewarding. And uh, you basically, you swing your right stick, and then you see the trajectory being created, and, and that's, that's the cool part. So, you know, for like us uh, FPS gamers out there, maybe that's something that, that I can actually be good at, you know, yeah, like exactly hit the with, with the right stick. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, so uh, on the ball, talked off the ball, but the ball. The <laughs> that ball. is the most essential part of the beautiful game. So what's new with the ball? We have a brand new ball physics system. And the ball is at the center of every match. And the innovation that we're bringing to the ball this year just gives you a more authentic experience in general. I think this should change so soccer, like the sport itself. The they should, it's just make it so you, like, you can hold on to the ball. Bounce, and you kind of like, you run around, you could like throw it and shit. Of a shot, pass, so you kind of like throw pass. it around the, the map. So what you will see Boom. is more realistic, Boom. realistic player deflections, uh, more realistic bounces. And if you do a shot, let's say a finesse shot, you will see maybe more curve. If you do a lace shot, uh, you will see uh, like a, a dipping trajectory, a rising trajectory. There's more variety in general. Like dodgeball. So the entire experience feels fresh because of this, this yeah. new ball physics system. Trying to get that ball to bounce in fun ways is going to create some interesting exactly. moments, that, especially for a lot of our top players out there. Uh, now, I know that a lot of fans I'm sure, are going to be very excited to try out these new features. And since you have the eyes and ears of a ton of FIFA fans right now, Floor is yours. Anything else you want to say to this community? Yes. So the features that I just talked about are very important, but there are many other changes that we're doing. Ah, uh, where's the lacrosse games? You know what I'm saying? Community feedback. Let's get them some One fucking... One of them is space. Mm, 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 we know that mm, sometimes mm, slower mm, defenders mm, can you know? catch up with faster dribblers. So we're tweaking pace in FIFA 20. It doesn't mean that the entire game is going to be based on player speed, uh, but it just means that player physical attributes are going to be slightly more important. We're doing something very similar for strength. And finally, for those players that have mastered the skill moves, okay. we're obviously tuning some of what them. What about curling? That, that You're right. Uh, Measure curling game. Ones, Holy fucking pog. Like, if you like to chain multiple skill moves in a row, then you will get a more realistic outcome. We're working on those. So you're telling right me now. that Tex can't like bust out like three <laughs> at the same time? We'll or? see, but you will see new behaviors there. Tex will still find a way. <laughs> Text will still find a way. Well, thank you so much, man. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Now, when can players get their hands on FIFA 20? So it's going to be sep sorry, September 27th. Okay. And uh, there's some good news. If you have EA Access, you're subscribed to EA Access, you can get uh, hands-on on September 19th. Wow. Okay. And then, of course, you know, EA Access coming it's to PS4. Exactly. That's good news. So PS4 fans will also be able to play FIFA September 19th. All right. Look at that there. And of course, all those details can be found online. So don't forget about that. It is whew, a hot day out here. We've been talking FIFA. I've been having a blast. And Sam, thank you so oh, much, man. Guys, you. give it up for Sam Rivera once again. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Now, don't forget, if you're in LA, come down to EA Play. Try out FIFA 20 for yourself or Come watch some great street football competition at our custom vault to pitch. Keep an eye out because the FIFA team has a lot more to come between now and September. They'll be posting deep dives on the Pitch Notes platform. you get more info on gameplay, career mode, pro clubs, Volta. Volta. And, because we all know you want to talk about it. FIFA Ultimate Team. So keep an eye out for those. I'm Golden Boy. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.